had major... Uh, For the last three decades, one man more than any other has been the scourge of the orthodontic establishment. And he lives here, in this slightly unexpected castle in the depth of rural Sussex. His name is John Mew, and he's an experienced dentist. But he also had orthodontic treatment when he was young, and he's blunt about what it did to him. I'm a perfect example of why you shouldn't take teeth out. In Britain, the most common treatment for children with overcrowded and uneven teeth is to use fixed braces, often accompanied by extractions. Mew believes that's wrong. Instead, he argues for an alternative approach. And there is, he says, a way to compare the results. Here, for example, we have a pair of twins. Both of them had irregular teeth, but Quinton, the one below, was more severe. I treated him while the Ben, his brother, with the milder problem, was treated by a traditional orthodontist. Although Ben and Quentin Creed are identical twins, their treatment wasn't. Like tens of thousands of other British children, Ben had four teeth extracted and the rest braced. Quentin, on the other hand, was treated by John Mew without extractions. Instead, he used a technique designed to expand his jaw to make room for the teeth. What's happened to their faces? Well, you can see that Ben's face is slightly flatter and slightly longer, whereas Quentin has more forward growth, which I think perhaps gives him a slightly better profile. Today, in their early 20s, the twins are happy that at least people can now tell them apart. But Ben, who received the traditional treatment, does feel John Mew's approach would have left him with a better result. I think in some respects it elongated my face. Because of the extractions, I'd, uh, I've got a smaller bite size, and so the uh, width of my mouth is smaller. So therefore the smile isn't as uh, pronounced. Well, there's a clear comparison between us as twins for the two different methods and it's, it's evident which method seems to work in, in favour of the orthodontistry method of Dr. Mews. Right? And how do you feel about that? Um, I don't mind too much. I mean, it gives us a bit of a difference between the two of us. But in hindsight, I would have preferred to go on with Mr. Mews' method. But Mew is in a minority. He believes mainstream orthodontics, with or without extractions, can change the shape of the skull, causing the face to grow downwards. All orthodontists and all dentists I talk to know that faces are, from time to time, damaged. They don't attempt to deny that, but I think they are worried that it might put patients off treatment. Mew's argument goes like this. A normal upper arch should look like this. It forms that way because the tongue rests in the area between the upper teeth. There, it counteracts the pressure of the cheeks, which would otherwise push the upper arch of the jaw in. But if a child sucks his thumb or breathes through his or her mouth for any reason, then the tongue drops from the top of the mouth and the upper arch can get pushed in. Nor is that the end of the process, according to Mew and the critics. They say the narrowed upper arch has a knock-on effect on the lower jaw, forcing it further back and down. And it's that, they say, which gives the appearance that front teeth stick out too far. The critics' treatment is based on changing the posture of the jaws and expanding them to fit the teeth. Brentwood in Essex and dentist Francois Rossau, another critic of British orthodontics, welcomes eight-year-old patient Katie and her mother. Hi, Katie. Hello, Katie. Katie has a very common problem, uneven teeth which appear to stick out at the front. But, says Rosso, Katie shows why you must look not just at the appearance of the teeth, but the jaw as a whole. I'll do this simple test. I'll just cover Katie's face there. I'll bring the paper down slowly up to about there and if you look at that do you can you see anything wrong with her face does it look as if her top lip is sticking no, out too her, far her face looks absolutely fine and, and her top lip is not sticking out it looks exactly right so that's not where the problem is then if we look at her full face see that lower jaw is too far back 
But the trouble is that traditional orthodontics would actually say, well, she's got sticky out teeth, it's crowded, so we'll take some out and move that back. That's what normally happens. The danger is if we pull the top teeth back, that will lock the lower jaw even further back. Another dentist to come out against the mainstream is Mike Fennell. And in his case, the evidence was very close to home, his son David. Ten years ago, on the advice of an orthodontist, he extracted four of David's teeth. But when David's brace came off, he began to worry. I'd catch glimpses of him from certain angles when his lips looked as if he was an old man with no dentures in. I felt really quite upset at times because I'd recommended to him that he have the treatment. In fact, I hadn't recommended and I'd told him he was going to have this treatment. The claim that mainstream orthodontics often causes damage is rejected by the spokesman for the British Orthodontic Society, Bristol consultant Nigel Harradine. He says that any treatment done wrongly could cause an undesirable facial appearance, but the type of treatment makes no difference. Studies have very, very, very clearly shown that you cannot tell if you don't know whether cases have been treated with extractions or non-extractions. In fact, the accusation of extractions that it might lead to faces with lips that are far too far back and uh, relatively very prominent nose and chin have been shown to be absolutely not the case when subject to scientific scrutiny. But John Mew argues that many of the studies are flawed and contradictory and that some back his view. We've had a, uh, a survey conducted um, and we've established that 56% of courses of orthodontic treatment have involved extraction. That's too high by your reckoning. I think my estimate, which is only a, a guess, it's not based on research, would be that that is likely to be slightly higher than is desirable. That does suggest that there are inappropriate extractions going on. I think that's a, a justifiable hypothesis. But there is one place where extractions are down. So much so, they're now used in just 15% of orthodontic treatments. Even here, though, where it all began, some people are beginning to question whether there might be a darker side to the Hollywood smile. One respected Los Angeles orthodontist who has lost faith in the traditional approach is William Hang. I have records on some of my own patients uh, several years after they've had treatment, as much as 10 and 15 years, and uh, I've seen that their teeth change, they're unstable, and I've seen their faces change. The key to the alternative approach is a piece of equipment designed to change the posture of the mouth and jaws and expand the jaws arch, known generally as a functional appliance. Hang uses a particular adaption invented by Mew, which he calls a postural appliance, which also encourages patients to keep their mouths shut. This is the appliance, and if Megan were to try to bite into it, these little flanges touch her. If she lets her jaw fall back, these remind her to keep her jaw forward. Effectively so that she grows as she should have done. Exactly, exactly. And she has to keep her teeth together at rest. So how's it been, Megan? You're looking forward to getting rid of it? Yeah. Look at that. You've got a Hollywood smile already. <laughs> it's a lovely smile. <laughs> The critic's final charge is that the orthodontic establishment is reluctant to listen. John Mew tells how when he wrote one article outlining his treatment approaches for the respected journal Dental Practice, the editor replied, Beautifully reasoned as ever, it makes good and sensible reading. Nevertheless, it pains me to tell you we cannot publish. The reasons are the disgraceful uproar from your colleagues every time something from the Mew stable appears in print. It's all wrong, I know but we have to be a little circumspect, being essentially a commercially backed organization. If my views were accepted, orthodontics would have to change dramatically. And indeed, many people would either have to change the way they worked or give up doing orthodontics. The vast body of orthodontists in this country who are well-trained, who go on courses, uh, who read the literature and keep up uh, have every reason to believe that they are basing their practice on the best available evidence. And some people just like to um, uh, perhaps feel that they are slightly crying in the wilderness. 
Mew and the critics are in a minority, but clearly there is a serious argument within orthodontics which parents and patients are not being informed about. And until that argument is resolved, the least we can ask is to be told. Indeed, this code issued by the General Dental Council is quite clear. It says, A dentist must explain to the patient the treatment proposed, the risks involved, and alternative treatments. Yet, the dispatches survey found that 75% of orthodontic patients were not warned that the treatment might not work, let alone that it could cause long-term damage and 88% were not told about alternative treatments. Orthodontist Dr. Derek Mahoney. Tonight on 60 Minutes. What a mess. At the age of 18, he looked like an old man with no teeth in. Our kids at risk. I, I begged them not to take them out. In the dentist chair. You look in the mirror now, what do you see? A, a handsome young man? Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> Check out the glossy magazines and you'll be dazzled by the Hollywood smiles. It's the kind of pressure parents and teenagers can do without especially as the perfect smile costs around $5,000. And then there's the torture. It can mean losing a few teeth and months trapped in braces. But what if that traditional treatment was doing more harm than good? What if it was actually damaging your face? Well, that's at the centre of a bitter row in the world of orthodontics, where a group of mavericks are promising straight teeth and good looks without the extractions, and often without braces. These days, everybody wants that perfect smile. Getting it has become almost a rite of passage for teenagers and a costly investment for parents. But now for the bad news. Maybe the treatment we've trusted for generations is all wrong. There is no doubt that orthodontics can damage faces. All orthodontists know this. I've spoken to orthodontists who actually say to me, I've got to get these teeth straight. And all right, maybe it has damaged the face slightly, but you know, that's the only way I can get the teeth straight. Can you gently bite again? English orthodontist Dr. John Mew is a maverick, dead against the popular treatment we take for granted, pulling out teeth and putting on braces. Sure, you'll have nice straight teeth, but, and here's the real revelation, often your face will actually end up looking less attractive. Have you damaged faces in the past? Well, look at mine. My father treated me by taking four teeth up here and pulling everything back, and I've now got a very long face, very flat cheeks and a big nose. I might have been a good-looking chap. To get a clearer idea, you should meet identical twins Ben and Quentin Creed. They're a classic test case. Ben had traditional treatment, four teeth out and braces. Quentin tried Dr Mew's method. No extractions, no braces. Now you can definitely tell them apart. Quentin, what's your opinion of the result? Well, I think it speaks for itself, doesn't it? I think it's, it's blatantly different from from being a mirror image to having um, different features altogether. I've got um, more pronounced cheeks, longer jawbone, more pronounced than my brother's, um, bigger smile, more full of lips. I've got a uh, longer face, the uh, smaller smile, um, less pronounced features, and just uh, generally more of a flatter face. Do you see that as a result of braces and extractions? Yeah, it's, it's probably due to the extractions and the braces that I had, yeah. In this face, the upper jaw is back. The crux of Dr Mew's argument is that extraction and braces push the face back, making it flatter and longer. The orthodontists prefer uh, what they call a straight face. I like a full, 
face, with the front part of the face further forward. All your film stars have that face. So, how does Dr Mew achieve this kind of film star good looks? Straight teeth and perfect cheeks and lips. Well, to put it simply, instead of removing teeth to fit the jaws, Dr Mew changes the shape and size of the jaws to fit the teeth. We took her jaw forward, although it looks too far forward there. In fact, she finished at the end of the first stage of treatment with it looking even worse here. But of course, that unlocked the lower jaw, which then enabled that to be brought forward, and we eventually finished with her looking like that. Really, it's quite shocking how little jaw I had and goofy I was. 18-year-old Andrew Hall is another of Dr Mew's success stories. When you look in the mirror now, what do you see? A, a handsome young man? Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> um, much better. I'm very glad I didn't end up just staying like that because it is quite atrocious. Has it had a flow-on effect in terms of your self-esteem and confidence? Yes, I could see how it would have... I might have not been quite so confident had I not been this good looking. When you look at a patient's smile who have teeth out, you can see the teeth are straight, uh, but there's no fullness to the lip. Uh, when I lecture internationally, this is commonly known as the Sydney smile. Sydney orthodontist Dr Derek Mahoney has a similar philosophy to Dr Mew. He says pulling out teeth is the easy option for the orthodontists, but usually not the best option for the patients. I would say in clinical practice, eight out of every ten patients that go to the traditional orthodontist are having teeth removed. 80% of patients. 80% of patients. Big, big R. Dr Mahoney does use braces in fewer than 5% of patients. Last year I saw 163 people for second opinions. And of those 163, we were able to treat all without extractions. And what had they been told by the traditional orthodontist? They had been told that they needed at least four teeth out uh, and possibly then the extraction of their wisdom teeth after treatment. So that's nearly eight teeth. We've got a survey that shows that 60% of treatments done by orthodontists in this country are done without extracting teeth. Well, that looks very good. Dr Jeff Wexler is spokesman for the Australian Society of Orthodontists and, not surprisingly, he supports the status quo. 40% of people in this country are having extractions according to your research. It's not my research, but yes, according to the best research, which is very authoritative in the country. But the Australian Orthodontic Society put its name to this study? It's not their, it's not their research. It will be published in due course, and I believe it belongs to the University of Adelaide. So is Derek Mahoney wrong in saying that the extraction rate in Australia is 80%? Derek, no. He, he's just quoting you his, his own experience. And, and there are lots of different variations in, in orthodontic practices. That's normal. Well, how about this example? 19-year-old Michael Buggy went to six Sydney orthodontists for his condition, some minor crowding. All insisted he lose four teeth. But his mother, Valerie, wasn't so sure. And I was horrified because I didn't think that he had such a big problem. And I, I begged them not to take them out. I said, isn't there, in all the knowledge that you have and all the studying that you've done, isn't there another way? But they were quite steadfast that, no, the teeth have got to come out or the problem would come back. Finally, Valerie gave in and took Michael to the dentist for the extractions. And he was just at the point of having them out. She had all the tools in her hand. And she said, you don't want this to happen, do you? And I said, no, I don't. But what else can I do? And as luck would have it, she gave me this dentist card and said, give him a ring. That card belonged to Derek Mahoney, and he straightened Michael's teeth without extractions. I would like to actually show these orthodontists that said to me, you'll be back, you'll be sorry. Um, I'd like to show them his smile now, and I just wish that orthodontists would get together and give any mother like me the opportunity not to have the teeth taken out. Can I show you this patient here? Do you think he needs extractions? Uh, well, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. Six eminent orthodontists recommended to this patient's mother that he needed to have the classic four on the floor. Uh, what you've presented me here is um, part, of, 
part of the information based on what you've shown me, I wouldn't. But there might be other factors that you haven't shown me in this patient's diagnosis. He's had very successful treatment with Derek Mahoney without extractions. Does that surprise you? No. Are faces being damaged by traditional extraction type orthodontics? I haven't seen any evidence at all to say that faces uh, are being damaged in general. Try telling that to dentist Dr Mike Fennell. He pulled out four of his son's teeth on the advice of an orthodontist. The result? David's face ended up looking like this. It ruined the look of his mouth. So from the nose upwards, he looked great. But from the nose downwards, he just looked terrible. But how do you tell that to your son? In fact, he looked like an old man. At the age of 18, he looked like an old man with no teeth in. Is it damaged the right word? Yes, it is, really. Traditional orthodontics did that to his face? They did, yes. Yes. If you look at Zoe, what's caused all this crowding is really not genetics. It's more related to uh, the way she breathes. And if you open really wide there, Zoe, ah, big out, you can see that ah. narrow top jaw, V-shaped arch. Look Dr Mahoney says the key is to diagnose the problem and start treatment at an early age. And the problem often starts here in the roof of the mouth. When children suck their thumbs or breathe through their mouths, it can be pushed in. And this narrowing can have a knock-on effect. The lower jaws force back and down, producing what most of us would call buck teeth. We can treat as early as uh, six and seven. Um, the benefit of treating early is that we're working with growth and as a result we're making the space before the eruption of the teeth. So I think age is the most important factor that separates the new approach to orthodontics to the traditional approach. 90% of orthodontic treatment is done in Australia according to the education and training of the specialists it's done after the age of 10 and the main reason I think is that simply that the teeth don't come through until after the age of 10. But doctors Mew and Mahoney would argue that it is imperative to treat them at a young age because that's when they're growing. That's where they can change the mouth well, structure and the jaw structure. Once again, you've got uh, one or two people going against uh, the, the rest of the orthodontists in the country who think that a few people should be treated early. Probably most people should be assessed early to catch the few and the rest should be followed closely and, and treated at the most appropriate time, which turns out to be later. It's uh, very easy to have a production line in orthodontics where everyone comes in at a certain age, has a certain number of teeth out, and um, goes through the orthodontic process. I think a lot of traditional orthodontists aren't used to dealing with young children, and as a result, it's a far easier approach for them to deal with the mainstream 14-year-old uh, um, extraction type uh, case. What, young kids just put in the too hard basket? Absolutely. Is patients' welfare being compromised here? I think. Uh, patient's uh, uh, choice is, is certainly being denied and ultimately uh, uh, patient's end results aren't as good as they could be. I'm saddened for the profession uh, to uh, think that there's so many people who aren't willing to offer their patients at least the choice. It would be slightly better if her cheeks were a little fuller like that. that Dr Mahoney and Dr Mew are by no means alone in this crusade but they're battling against a powerful establishment. It's amazing if if you challenge conventional orthodoxy, you will be resented. It's a lot of all those who try and change the system. And even if the traditionalists don't agree, Dr Mew says his results speak for themselves. I must say I've been amazed how deeply resented I am at times. I mean, I've even been threatened with assault at meetings. People hate me with a depth that's really quite surprising. Ultimately, though, perhaps we should leave the final judgment to the patient, like the now not-so-identical twins, Ben and Quentin. After all, they have to live with the results. I'd definitely go for Mr V's method. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. I think in, if I had the option again, then I would go for Mr Mew's method. And the fact that, yeah, it does give better results. Quentin got the better deal. His treatments, obviously, uh, without the extractions, he's got a better features is uh, more pronounced and mine are less pronounced and a smaller smile. How do you go with the girls then? You say that Quentin has a better smile. He may have a better smile but um, it's all, all the chat up and everything else. It's not, <laughs> it's not just the facial features that count. <laughs> <laughs>
Before we go, a word on our website. Standing by now to answer your questions is orthodontist Dr Derek Mahoney from Our Straight Talk Story. Our address is 9msn.com.au, then go to the 60 Minutes site. And just when you thought it was safe to dive back into the mailbag, Jules. Peter Overton's report on the great Australian smile and the extractions, physical and financial, so many of you go through. It's painful, expensive and maybe unnecessary. Last year I saw 163 people for second opinions. And of those 163, we were able to treat all without extractions. And what had they been told by the traditional orthodontists? They had been told that they needed at least four teeth out uh, and possibly then the extraction of their wisdom teeth after treatment. So that's nearly eight teeth. I am a general dental practitioner and I absolutely agree with Dr Mahoney that patients who undergo orthodontic treatment have teeth extracted. I was delighted to see your program because perhaps now parents will start asking more questions about treatment offered to their kids. Take them out, don't take them out. For some, it's all too hard. Why don't people accept that what they're born with is what they're meant to have, and that interfering with nature is not necessarily free from unwanted side effects?